some weeks ago. And so um, as I was driving here this evening, I just kept praying in the Holy Ghost and, and uh, keep my heart open to what the Lord wanted us to talk about. And, and nothing came. And we started worshiping. And, and so when I sat down there, I had a direction. Praise God. So, so the, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Amen. So let's pray as we get ready to study the Word. Father God, we ask now that our hearts be attentive to listen to what your Spirit has to say. I yield myself as a vessel of heaven to speak to our hearts, Lord, to speak the truth in love. And Lord, uh, we, we receive it. We receive uh, correction and encouragement and strength by your Spirit. And so, Father God, we uh, thank you for this time and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, turn to your Bible in Luke chapter 6, and we're going to talk about a portion of Scripture. Jesus shares a story which I believe is very significant. Um, And if we will apply what's being taught here, again, our lives will never be the same. Once you become a doer of the word, you will never be the same. We can be a hearer and not be changed. But when we put into action, then all heaven breaks loose. You've heard that before, all hell breaks loose? You've heard that term before. Well, do you know all heaven can break loose? It can. It can. If, if you call on heaven, call on the name of the Lord, and, and do what he says to do, woo, heaven breaks out. Praise God. How many of you heard the news today about some new discovery of seven, seven planets, earth-like planets that they discovered? Several of you saw that in the news. That's, that's kind of an interesting that it was seven I don't know what galaxy or where it's at. I didn't see the details, but anyway, that that was kind of an interesting, interesting thing. Oh yeah. 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 Well, praise God. Um, so it's going to be interesting what what will come of of that sort of thing. But let's go to Luke chapter six. And. I uh, I have to lead into it by starting at verse number 43. For a good tree brings not forth corrupt fruit, neither does a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. All right, think about that. Luke 6, 43. A good tree, say good tree. It doesn't, br- it doesn't bear bad, cor- uh, corrupt fruit. That, what's wrong? Okay. Well, well, we'll have to call the people we bought it from and see what technology, what's going on. If it's bothering you, I'll shut it off, okay? Okay, well. Um, and then it says, a bad tree, corrupt, corrupt kind of makes it kind of confusing. So let me read it. A good tree doesn't bring forth bad fruit, and a bad tree doesn't bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. Right? For of thorns, men do not gather figs. Figs do not grow on a thorny bush, do they? No, they don't. Nor a bramble bush does not grow grapes. So Jesus is setting us up to see something here. He's not just talking about trees and fruit. He's talking about people and our actions. Okay? And then he says, a good man... So he's bringing it together. He's talking about the trees and the fruit. Then he says, a good man 
out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. An evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is, is of evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Okay, so let's talk about that for just a couple of minutes. Jesus is saying there's a good man and an evil man. What makes a person good or evil? It's, it's by what they do, the choices they make, what, what, you, what you put in, right? So think of it this way. And Jesus ends that verse by saying out of the abundance, basically out of the abundance of the heart, you know, the mouth is speaking there. But a good man has chosen to put good things in his heart. And that's why he's good. Okay? Now, by the way, a, just a good person doesn't mean that that good person is going to go to heaven. Good people go to hell because they've rejected Jesus. But what Je Jesus isn't talking about salvation here. Jesus is talking about our lives and what we're doing. And so he is saying that a good man has invested treasure or good things in his heart. And because there's good things in his heart, good things are going to come out. The difference between a good man and an evil man is is what they've put in their hearts. That's the difference. That is the difference. Now, who decides what goes, in, goes into our hearts? And how do things get into our hearts? Do you know how they get in there? They get in through our gates. You have gates in your body. You have your eye gates. You have your ear gates. Those are the main gates that, that get into our spirit, into our heart. And so that's why it's so important we we guard what we allow to come into our eyes and into our ears if you hear a bunch of trash a bunch of uh, strife um, evil communication corrupt communication vile communication um, cursing and so forth if you if you take that in guess what's going to happen it's going to come out yeah but if you put in good things so God expects us to what? Guard our heart with all diligence, for it's out of what we put in our heart. That's what creates the issues in life. And if we want to locate where we are or other people are, listen to their words. It'll tell us very, very clearly what they've been depositing. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So, so Jesus is... Telling us, if we want to have good things come from our lives, our actions be good, we're going to have to do something about it. It doesn't come, how do I need to say this? It doesn't come naturally. It comes spiritually. It comes naturally to be selfish. Huh? The, car the carnal part of us is, is, is the flesh, and that's the, the battle there. And the only way to overcome that is by investing in our hearts the good things. Praise the Lord. Now, Jesus shared all of this to bring us to this part. Verse 46 starts with the word and. And it's be you, don't, you just don't stand up and say, and... No, it's connecting what he was teaching. So what he's saying here is connected to what we just shared. He said, and why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Think about that. Let that sink in. He, he's talking to us as believers. Hey, you call me Lord. 
That's the scripture too. But look, think about that. He's, he's saying, you call me Lord, but don't do what I say. You're a liar. I'm not your Lord if you're not doing what I say. Ooh, it just got quiet in here. But it is the truth. Remember Edith Ann that used to do that? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist that. <laughs> oh, you, you, yeah, you were looking down. What was that sound? Praise God. <laughs> so, so Jesus is trying to get our attention. Don't just think he's, he's talking to people 2,000 years ago because there's plenty of Christians that go around calling, well, I'm a Christian and I love Jesus and he's my Lord. And I'll tell you, look at their life. They're not doing what he says. You call me Lord, but do, don't do what I say. So if we want him to be Lord in our life, we're going to have to do what he says. Yeah, brother. Yeah, I remember the word he says. Not everyone that says Lord, Lord, Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's, that's so very true. That does the will of God. And again, of course, in John's gospel... It's recorded where Jesus talks about, you know, um, uh, actually I'm going to uh, turn there because it, it's so so powerful. He talks about how how he gets, how God gets glory when we are doing what he's, the Father's glorified when we bear much fruit. Fruit meaning doing, being obedient to, to his instructions. So many Christians take the Bible as just a suggestion. No. Yeah. Herein is my Father's glorified. Oh, John 15, 8. Yeah. Herein is my Father glorified. Did you bear much fruit? So shall you be my disciples. Praise God. Verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Keeping commandments. Even as kept my Father's commandments, and I abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. So that chapter 15 talks about that, you know, He is divine, where the branches were connected to Him, and, and being connected to Him, staying into Him, calling Him Lord, and, and acting like He's Lord in our life, will bear much fruit to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now, after throwing this out, why do you call me Lord and don't do what I say? Then he gives to me a great illustration. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and he does them, I will show you what this person is like. He's like a man that's building a house. By the way, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You're the, you're the house of God. And we're supposed to be building a house. He said this man, when he was building his house, he dug deep. What does it mean to dig deep? When you don't feel like doing what's right, you do it. You do what's right anyway. Your flesh doesn't dictate to you. You dig deep. Hallelujah. You keep going when other people quit. You're committed, dedicated, disciplined. How many of you have dug stuff? I mean, it, ta it takes effort, especially in rocky soil and mentone. My goodness. I've done some digging in Mentone, and you dig just a little while, and you hit a little rock, what you think is a little rock, and you keep digging, and the thing is that big. I mean, it's work. That's right. It takes work. It's effort to dig. But you will not have a strong foundation if you don't dig. Part of the digging in our lives is removing the things that need to be out of the way. Yeah. Digging deep. Building that foundation. So that 
as you build up, it will be able to carry the weight. And it will not be moved. Right? Why did this man build a foundation and take the effort to do it? Because he knew that in life, storms would come. Turn to your neighbor and say, storms will come. Storms will come. Storms will come. Hallelujah. But see, he built his foundation on what? The bedrock. What would, would not be moved. Right? He, he, built, he built on a solid place. Now today, our building codes... What, what we do is we have an outside footing generally um, that helps carry the weight of the house, which is deeper than just the, the foundation itself, which is, uh, I don't know how many inches, maybe five inches deep of concrete, whatever, for, for a house. Um, and so that's what we use. We use you know, concrete for the most part to lay our foundations. Concrete is like, is like a rock in a way. And so, in this story, it says that the floods rose up, the streams beat vehemently upon that house, and even though the streams and the floods came... By the way, how many of you have seen clips the last couple of weeks of all the damage by flooding and <clears throat> landslides and everything? I mean, it can cause great damage. Well, the storm came... Against this house. Again, the illustration is this is a person. And trouble came. But guess what? The trouble could not tear down the house because the house was on a foundation. And the foundation was the fact that they truly were under the lordship of Jesus and did what he said. That's the difference. It could not be shaken because it was founded on the rock. You and I are founded on the rock when we do what the Bible says to do. When it says to bless those that curse you, do good to those that despitefully use you, to bless, to pray, to love, to give, and you're, you're, you're digging deep. Keep building on that rock. But he that hears, well, praise God, at least they heard. But doeth not. Doeth not what? Doeth not the word of God, the will of God. Again, it started in verse 46. Why do you call me Lord and don't do what I say? But he that hears not and does not do what I say is like... i got to be honest with you. I'm tired of us in the body of Christ thinking that we can get away with it. That we can just do our own thing. And God loves us, loves, us, loves us enough that even if trouble comes, He's going to bail us out of it. Honey, that doesn't work. We will reap what we sow. That's a law of heaven. Praise God. Yes, God loves you. But He can't. Go beyond this. Jesus is making it very clear. You do my word. You do the will. Things will come. And you'll be able to stand. But if you don't, what's going to happen? Just like in this story. This person heard but chose not to do the will of God. Chose not to do what Jesus said. You might say, well, what does Jesus say? Well, you need to read the book (laughs) to see what he says. 
you mean I have to read the whole thing? Well, start, start at least with the Gospels. But yeah, you need to read the whole thing. You know, as much time as we spend watching television, you could read the Bible four times through if you cut a few hours out a day. Well, amen to that, somebody. Praise God. Read it, Genesis to Revelation. You'll find out. Well, Jesus was talking in the Old Testament? Of course He was. Jesus just didn't appear in Matthew. He always was. He is the living Word. Praise God. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man without. Say without. Without Without a foundation. Without a foundation. You know, it's quick and easy to build something if you don't do a foundation. The easy way out. Man, I've done that some in my life. Mickey Mouse stuff. Don't do it right. You know, a project around the house or or whatever, fixing something. It, it will. It, 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 you'll pay the price. It'll cost you more. And you have to redo it and do it right. And I think I'm finally getting it. Do it right the first time. <laughs> Praise God. You know, you get in a hurry. You got so much going on. But, you know, it's better to do it right. But this man tried to build a house without a foundation. Again, the foundation in our lives is doing the Word. So, if the Bible says you can be angry but sin not, you better work on that. If you're losing your temper and telling people upside down and sideways and telling them where to go, something's wrong. Huh? Yeah. Get control of that devil. This man is like one that builds without a foundation. But he builds his house on the earth. Now the natural illustration is, you can picture it, you just build a hut or something just right on the dirt. And I've been in places, that's what they do. And a big wind comes, big rainstorm, it's, it's messed up. Yeah, it's gone. Whatever. But the illustration spiritually is, if you're building your house on the earth, you're building it on natural, sensual, carnal things. That's the choice. Your your foundation is the way of the world. What happened? The same stream came. The same storm came. The same flood rose up. And beat against that house without a foundation. And immediately. Say immediately. Immediately. What happened to it? It fell. It fell. fell. Now I got to be honest with you. I feel bad when I see fellow Christians fall. Some I've warned and said, hey, you better do something about this or there's going to be a great fall. But I can't do it for them. We have to be doers of the word ourselves. And, and honey, don't expect me to come rescue you. That's not a very Christian thing to do. Well, why should I? Why should I rescue you from the judgment that is supposed to help you wake up and repent and get right? If you think if you think you can get away with not doing it and people will rescue you, you're wrong. And shame on Christians for not obeying the Spirit of God. They're being moved naturally, carnally. And God's trying to get their attention. He doesn't want them destroyed, but they're doing it to themselves. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. And 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 so 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 often and, and I'll tell you, our society in what what we are doing in just 
handing out money pe to people. We're perpetuating them not getting spiritually lined up to the laws of God. You'll reap what you sow. They're short-circuiting things. Because let me tell you, when the judgment comes and you have a great fall in situation, it makes you reconsider your ways. <laughs> yeah. You, what God has for you. Right. So there's definitely a balance, and that's why Jesus says be led by the Spirit. Absolutely. Because there are times to give to people. There are times to bless. But there's also times, like you say, that there's a judgment that they have to learn to walk through that valley themselves so that they can get to the other side of the victory. Amen. The, the, the truth, yeah, you're right. We need to be led by the Spirit. But so often we're not. We're just led by the natural. And you see someone going through a hard time. You, you want to help them out naturally. But again, we need to be led by the Spirit of God. We don't want to short circuit judgment. Because God's judgment is always righteous and good. And we need, we need to hear that. Uh, Lorna, just a moment. Yes, brother. Yes, he will correct. Yes. Amen. And that's and that's part that's part of it. That's part. Of it. Amen. And he does love us. That's right. And a parent, if you love your children, you're not going to let them just run amok. No. You're going to train them up the way they're to go. And when they aren't doing the right thing, the rod of correction. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So that's talking about application. You're purposely listening because you want to grow, because you want to please Jesus, and, and so you're intently focused on that, okay? Yes. And that just ties to the parable of all parables, right? About the sower sows the word. This is, this is all related to that. You're right. It, the, it, heard their it got to their natural hearing, but it didn't reach the good ground. Once it reaches good ground, it's going to produce in our lives. Amen. Amen. So this man... Because he didn't have a foundation, immediately his house fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So, my friends, let's consider what is our foundation. Are we practicing what we preach? <laughs> are, we, are we practicing what we've heard preach? Are we practicing what we've, we've read? I hope so. Just make that investment in your heart. Keep investing it. And out of the good treasure of your heart, you will produce good things. Jesus didn't promise us a rose garden here on earth. No, He promised us. He, 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 he told us that in this world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Like we were talking about earlier, we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You don't stay there. You go on to victory. Praise God. Amen. So let's keep building that foundation. Amen. Be endurers of the word. And we call him Lord. He say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Let's all stand.
Praise God. I apologize. I went a little over time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Before we close tonight, my mom asked that she'd, uh, that she'd have hands laid on her. And anyone else, you, you want hands laid on your, you? Jesus said, these signs shall follow those that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Praise God. So you asked for it, so come get it. Praise God. Come on up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on up. Anybody else? We've got several coming up. Praise the Lord. Come on.